Jesus said, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Good morning, welcome to Movilla Abbey Church. Welcome if you're with us every week. Welcome if you've not been with us in a while. And welcome if you're joining us for the first time. If you are watching this, then you are part of this community of Movilla Abbey Church. And there are two community events that we want you to know about. On Saturday, the 30th of May, we would love you to join us for the big church quiz. We'll be meeting at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. If you've not yet used Zoom, you can download that simply and easily. It'll not ask for any personal details. And if you can't get Zoom, then there will be a phone number you can call to access the quiz. You can play as individuals or as teams. It's a chance to see one another and have some fun together. Then on Sunday the 7th of June at 7pm, we're hosting a special event here on our YouTube channel. A time of worship where we'll be singing your top six hymns or worship songs. So get in touch with us here or on Facebook or any other way and let us know your favourite hymn or worship song and why it's important to you. The deadline is this Monday night, so send your messages now and then we'll see you there. There's a scripture that says that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him. So we are paying attention to how God might be taking these difficult circumstances we're living through and bringing something good out of them. We've thought of those images in scripture of God as a sculptor, a silversmith, a potter, molding and shaping us more into who we were always meant to be. Refining where our joy comes from, reshaping how we love one another. We want to keep saying yes to God's moulding and shaping. And so at the beginning of our time together, I invite you to join in with me as we pray these simple words. God, who causes all things to work together for good, we say yes to your refining we say yes to your shaping. We say yes to you. Amen. Let's give our yes to God as we sing in worship together. Our chaos back into order 
who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the King of glory, the King above all kings. the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King Conquer the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. That you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done. Everyone's experience of life in lockdown has been different and over the past few weeks we've been hearing from members of our church family about what they're doing and what God is teaching them. Today we're going to hear from Freddie and then June is going to lead us as we pray for our world. Hello and good morning. My name is Freddie and currently during lockdown I've been living alone in an apartment in the centre of Newton Arts. First and foremost coping with isolation uh, during the lockdown has been very difficult um, but not being able to see my family, uh, especially my grandchildren, has been very difficult, really tough. Much more than usual, because I'm isolated, I have more time to spend communicating with God. Above all, he is teaching me to cope with mental health issues by engaging with him more often. Also, he is teaching me not to take life for granted. Please pray for my family and friends that we will be united very soon, much stronger, and closer to God. The one thing I'm thankful for during lockdown is the Zoom app on our phones. It has enabled our life group to continue meeting on a regular basis and has enabled my beautiful wife Alexis, my wonderful grandchildren and my children to have a two-hour family quiz every Saturday evening. Isaiah 65, verse 24 Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Let us pray. 
Holy Spirit of God, you are always present with us. We pray for all those living through lockdown alone. We pray that they would know you close to them. We thank you for the technology that allows so many of us to stay connected to loved ones. We pray especially for everyone unable to connect in this way. May they not forget that they are known and loved by friends and family and by you, God. Jesus, you call us your friends. And we pray now for every friendship being changed by our circumstances. Lord, some friendships have grown stronger. We pray that that would increase. Where friendships have been broken, we pray for your healing. Where friendships are on hold, we pray that they could pick up where they left off. Use this experience to strengthen the love between us, Lord Jesus. Father God, you care for us like a mother hen with her chicks. We pray for those who need special care at this time. Especially those who can't understand why they can't see loved ones, experience touch, or unable to go outside. For those in care homes, those confined to rooms or hospital beds. Lord, Underneath the frustration and confusion, would you give them a deep peace in their spirit? Holy Spirit, you are our comforter. And we pray for those who are grieving. We think especially of Vi and Pat who both lost parents this week. We think of those unable to say their final goodbyes and those unable to offer support to friends and family. Give them your comfort, Lord. Give them your peace. And we pray that human kindness would go beyond our usual traditions as we find new and creative ways to show our love, support and care for those who are mourning. Jesus, you always had an eye for those who were in need, those who were forgotten, those who were on the margins. Give us, your people, that same sensitivity, that same priority, and teach us to care and listen. Father God, you hold the world in your hands. We pray for people across Bangladesh, India and Bhutan suffering the effects of Cyclone Amphan. We pray especially for those least able to help themselves. the poor fishing and farming communities and thousands of Rohingya refugees living in crowded camps. 
mighty God, be their protector and stir everyone who can help into action. May we love them as we love ourselves. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The reading today is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 20. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, unless... Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Aren't those amazing words that God has for us today? Live as children of light. Find out what pleases God. God wants us to live as children of light. Now we have a colouring sheet with those words that you can download from a link below. And if there's someone in your house who's taking part in that, don't forget to send us photos of your finished pictures. In my wrestling, in my dice, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my trouble sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my trouble sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions the truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my trouble sea Whoa, You are the peace in my trouble sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness I will follow you I won't fear what tomorrow brings With each morning I'll rise and sing My God's love will lead me through You are the peace in my trouble sea Whoa, You are the peace in my trouble sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the dark, I will follow you. Brightest 
I never thought I would hear myself say at the start of a sermon, did you hear what Russell Brand said this week? Russell uh, has shown himself, if you know him, to be a very divisive figure as a comedian and in what he has done in the public eye in the past. His anarchic style is not to everyone's taste, but he is immensely popular. There's no getting away from that. Having 11.4 million followers of his Twitter page. Yes, 11.4 million. And last week, he had something very perceptive to say, I think, about prayer and the phenomenon of what is happening in many people's hearts and minds all around the world uh, in this lockdown as the majority of us are in isolation. Take a look at this. Hey, how are you coping? Are you all right? Guess what I found out? That everyone's Googling prayer. People want to know how to pray all of a sudden. There was a time not that long ago when we thought that prayer religion was redundant, that mankind could answer all of our questions through technology. What we are looking for a sacred experience. What do you mean sacred, Russell? It, in the dictionary, it tells you that sacred means holy, divine, the presence of God. What I think that means is the presence of the limitless that is always, by its nature, present in the limited bandwidth of our physical sense-based experience here on earth, which on some level we know is not enough. And now we've been forced into a monastic corner, except for those of us that are frontline workers, except for those of us that are up there shirkers, and except for those of us that are poor mag jerkers, we're all, stationed aren't we and alone now i've got young kids so i'm pretty busy and occupied with the, dealing with the madness and the continual violence plus i've got beer oh no beer oh no beer but what we all need is a connection to the sacred and the fact that people are googling prayer suggests to me that we need to find a way to pray together now you might not want to pray because <laughs> excuse me mate you've had a difficult experience of religion or you say hey man i don't like religion it's trying to tell me how to think a rink a -de dink it ain't trying to tell you how to think. It's just giving you some suggestions how to think. And you think nationalism's not trying to tell you how to think? You think capitalism's not trying to tell you how to think? You think rationalism, materialism aren't telling you how to think? You think you're not trapped in some sort of cyber pinball, neurological machine, information synaptically rattling around just to keep you trapped, trapped within the sounds of commercials bombarding your ears for years and years continually? Well, let me tell you, if you think that you're free, the only way that you're free is your freedom to see that there's something that be beyond what you can normally see and the only way we can access this is through prayer so take a moment take a breath breath is life and think about why are you looking for prayer see I suppose a lot of us are getting confronted with a different type of reality all of a sudden ain't we like what's important to me what do I want from the world? What do I want from my relationships? What do I want from my working life? Can they achieve anything? Does do my individual goals and desires matter anymore now that the fact that everyone is Googling prayer suggests to me that we need to find some way to pray together. Now, I don't know where Russell Brand stands on knowing and following Jesus Christ, but I do know because it's well documented that he has had some kind of authentic spiritual journey in the last five years. And I believe Russell has noticed and given public voice to something we, the church, really need to see ourselves and pay attention to right now. And that is that there is a very significant spiritual awakening and questioning going on all around us. And we need to find some way to respond to that. In his letter to church members in Ephesus, the Apostle Paul tells them each, and by implication us too, to find out what pleases the Lord. And he goes on to say that they should live as wise, not as unwise, making the most of every opportunity. In similar language, the Apostle Peter, writing instructions to Christians, says this, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect. Now, this isn't rocket science, but I seem to remember Jesus saying more than once that there is more joy 
in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 who do not need to. So what I'm thinking is this. If nothing pleases God more than another person checking Jesus out, responding to him, repenting and coming into his family, and we are surrounded by people who are now asking spiritual questions of their lives for maybe the first time in their lives because of coronavirus. Do you think God could be presenting us with an unprecedented opportunity to share the hope that we each have? Over the last weeks, we've been asking ourselves if God who works all things together for the good of those who love him, could be using this time of crisis to refine and shape his church, that's you and me, to be more how he wants us to be. Now, if, as Russell Brand brilliantly puts it, we are being forced into a monastic corner where God is wanting to connect with and to work on us, I wonder, do you think, amongst other things, if God could be shaping us for sharing? Shaping us to share the hope we evidently have in Jesus, with so many who are now obviously looking for answers and for hope. Throughout this crisis, that is having a significant economic impact on the low paid, many who've lost their jobs, more and more people are relying on food banks to meet their physical hunger. And we, the church, have noticed and responded through the kindness and generosity of people like you who, who think to put a few extra things in your shopping trolley and to leave them in the food bank collection. We have stepped up to feed people's physical hunger. But what of people's now evident spiritual hunger. In these days, could God also be working in this crisis to reveal the spiritually hungry to us who have spiritual food? I believe that God is doing this very thing. Now, that's one of the reasons we are right now giving ourselves, along with many other church congregations in this part of Northern Ireland, to 10 days of focused prayer for a spiritual harvest out of this time. Today, Sunday the 24th, we are all being asked to pray for those in our own social and family circles who have not so far discovered the love of God for them. And we will all have people that we know where that is the case. It is the heart and desire of God for people to come to him so that they can experience his love, the forgiveness, the freedom and the fullness of life that Jesus alone makes possible. And we who have these things are called by our Father to take every opportunity to share our food with others. So I want to make a very simple appeal to you this morning to ask you to respond to the spiritual hunger around us. And you can do two simple things. And these are things that we can all do. Firstly, number one, pray. If you haven't yet used some of your extra time from being at home to sit in a monastic corner, as it were, can I encourage you to start today? Take 15 minutes, maybe each morning or each evening or, or both, not only to chat to God and to get your own spiritual food, but to take some time each day to pray for people you know who don't yet know Jesus like you do. If you haven't done so yet, um, you can also join us each night, Monday to Friday, uh, as we read a psalm and pray together for those around us. So that's the first thing, pray. We can all do that. 
Secondly, share. Now, this is very easy to do. What I'm going to say now is not a guilt trip. So often when we hear a message about the E word, evangelism, we feel like we're being made to feel guilty if we're not leading our friends through the steps to salvation or getting them on an alpha course. It's awkward for many of us, isn't it? But that's not what I'm asking this morning. As we ease out of isolation and begin socialising and working again, albeit in stages, this is simply an invitation to chat when you meet up with those you know, either outside or indoors in the coming weeks and months. So when you start back at your school or college or university, or when you start back at your job, or when you get to go again to your bowling club or football club, or gym, or craft class, or uniformed group, or wherever it might be, I can almost guarantee that one of the first things you will ask each other when you meet up again is, how did you get on in lockdown? And the wonderful thing is, uh, every one of us will have a tale to tell because we've all been there. This is a shared experience. And here's what I want you to try. When it's your turn to answer that question, when they ask you, how did you get on in lockdown? You could talk about the fact that you're now a jigsaw ninja or an expert painter of garden fences or an authority on the entire box set of the West Wing, but also why don't you mention the positive difference that prayer has made to your experience over these months? The difference that knowing God and your relationship with him makes to your feeling alone. I bet some of you will find that that very simple sharing will open up a very natural conversation with that other person about spiritual things that maybe you've never been able to have that kind of conversation before. And it won't be awkward, it'll be very natural. And with gentleness and respect for where that person is coming from, you may be able to start a conversation about Jesus uh, in a way that you've never done before. And I tell you, not only will that please you, but that will very much please God. Now, can I simply suggest that we take a moment of silence now to offer ourselves to God to use this opportunity in the coming days, weeks and months ahead. Father, we thank you that you are working all things together for good in our lives and for your shaping of us. We offer you ourselves for sharing the hope that we have with others who are hungrily looking. Amen.
May you take every opportunity you can to please God and to share the hope that you have in Jesus with others. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen.